Survival in the Big Surf in Hawaii requires a special design board called a big gun. Rick and Greg should know, they're the two top cats in Big Surf. But would you believe these two? Sometimes I wonder about that contest. John and Pam are seeing Rick, Sue, and Frenchie off to the islands. Rick has lived in the islands and has relatives there, which makes everything cool. You know, in just four hours and a hundred beans, you can safari to paradise. Hawaii is a group of islands and coral reefs extending 1,600 miles in the central Pacific. But only seven of these islands are inhabited. Giant storms come exploding down from the Bering Sea, pounding the north side of the islands. Along the north shore of Oahu were the best big wave hunting grounds in the world. Each year during the storm season, hundreds of big wave hunters from around the world safari here with their big guns. Frenchie is greeted with the traditional lay. Hawaii is a land of yesteryear, yet modern. Waikiki is probably the most famous tourist area in the world. Looks like good time Frenchie is going native. In the background, every geography teacher will readily recognize this world-famous landmark, Mount Fujiyama. Nature is blessed to Hawaii with year-round sun and natural beauty. For the non-surfer, a rent-a-canoe is fun. All ages enjoy fun in the sun. The credit card set prefer the outriggers. Many of the locals still surf in the old style. To a newcomer with bread, a rented instructor is the best plan. And for those on economy budget plan, the local chamber of commerce provides free swim lessons from three to five daily. They had to discontinue this plan. It was crushing the waves. For all of us with a no budget plan, let's head out Kamehameha Highway to Sunset Beach. At Sunset Beach each year, the top 25 surfers from around the world are invited to compete in the Duke Kahanamoku contest for the international championship. Ricky Grigg recently won the 1967 title with 29 more points than anyone had ever before received. A mile offshore, Sunset is breaking, and breaking hard. Most big wave riders consider Sunset the best surfing spot in the world. Ironically, more California surfers than Hawaiians safari to the North Shore for the World Series of Surfing. A wipeout at sunset can mean a long, dangerous swim. Sue introduces Frenchie to surf photographer Don Brown. Checking outside, Don spotted Rick really turning on. Don pointed out to Sue and Frenchie how a few years ago just making waves this size was considered an accomplishment. The main emphasis has been on speed. When Ricky began performing spinners on the giant sunset peaks, it started a whole new concept of big wave riding. The popular pintail shaped surfboard had speed but lacked maneuverability. Ricky felt the board must go where you want it to go. More functional boards were designed and the modern trend was set. A strong cone of wind and a wave like this present problems even for Rick. After the drop, watch Rick stall and wait for the curl. As it catches up, Rick trims and steps forward for a little more speed. Watch now as Rick spots a giant boil and heads for disaster. Another surfer heads for disaster. Tourists on rent buses with rent binoculars are startled to see men and boards pulverized. Attention all passengers, please turn in your glasses and return to your seats. Your three minutes are up now. Wasn't that fun? Well, they'll never believe it back in Wichita anyway. But not all the spectators were tourists. 
little Jeff Hackman observed past masters like Fred Van Dyke. Fred was surfing before Jeff was even born. Jeff is the quiet observant type. His eager mind absorbed the critical drop, the air of taking off and getting trapped like Ricky Grigg here, and the wisdom of Ricky's quick pronoun to avoid a long swim. Frenchie wanted to try out his new pipo board. Both Frenchie and Jeff can learn a lot from Paul Gebauer. Jeff admired Paul's exceptionally smooth style. Maybe, just maybe, he'd be able to ride like that someday. Jeff's curiosity was so great he had to try it. When Jeff first paddled out at sunset, he was 14 and weighed only 89 pounds soaking wet. Those waves must have looked like mountains to Jeff. From his first day in Big Surf, it was obvious Jeff Hackman's natural ability far exceeded his small stature. A new giant was born. Hackman, no doubt, will be added to the list of all-time giants at sunset, like Trent, Curran, Downing, Cole, and of course, the undisputed master of sunset, Ricky Grigg. Ricky has described dropping down the face of sunset as similar to the feeling a skier might experience being chased down a mountainside by an avalanche. Ricky and Jeff share a wall with Frenchie. Frenchie and his new belly board caused grave concern, but under Ricky's watchful eye, Frenchie began handling the big waves like a pro. Rusty Miller gets a classic wall. Out of nowhere comes Frenchie on his out of control Batma board. His unscheduled go behind unnerved Rusty. Rusty took one look at this snub nosed bat gun and climbed over the wall. Frenchie's control left a lot to be desired, but his speed was phenomenal. Greg Knoll and Sue shared Frenchie's happiness in becoming part of the surf scene. Midget Farley and some of the barefoot rebels from Australia have safaried 6,000 miles to enjoy this surfer's paradise. Out of the whole world, it seems nature has chosen the 12 miles along the north shore of Oahu as the perfect retreat for big wave hunters. afternoon, some of the surfers unwisely stayed out until almost dark. This can be very dangerous because the surfer is tired and the long afternoon shadows make the waves difficult to judge. Paul Gabara makes his last ride across the steep inside wall and wisely heads for home. The ghost rider came in. But Rusty Miller stays out too long and runs into a little trouble. This pair made it the hard way. Hey, Charlie, get out of the way. Charlie, let go. Charlie. <laughs> too bad about Charlie. But Charlie had the last laugh. Watch as one surfer loses control and buries his board in the back of his ex-buddy. 